Uh, all right, let's get back to the phone lines here. And we've got kind of a cool guest coming on next. I'm going to put a little pressure on him. This is Ron Olson. He's with Mosaic. He's the Senior Agronomist for North America. That's a pretty cool title, Ron. Good afternoon. Well, thank you for that compliment. Uh, I have a lot of fun in that responsibility of working with our technical sales managers out in North America as we work to uh, supply information to our retailers and to farmers. When we're talking about fertilizing soybeans, uh, one of the big things that I think guys don't realize is that soybeans per bushel are actually pulling more potassium out of the ground and leaving the field with that crop than corn is. Is that a surprise for most guys? I think it is a surprise. They haven't been paying attention to that. And that's really a, a new area of focus that the farmers who want to grow high-yield soybeans need to be paying a real uh, focused amount of attention on that right now. And the other part that's new is that soybeans are pulling as much phosphorus out, uh, high-yield soybeans are push, pushing as much phosphor, pulling as much phosphorus out as corn. And, and so uh, that's, been, uh, that's the story that's developing from some of the research that we're doing the last two years. Okay, so when is the best time to get the P and K out there? We, we've had a few guys talking about foliar, but our results, honestly, Ron, from foliar have been kind of hit and miss. Some years we get really good results, and it's usually when we get plentiful rainfall. And on years where it's you know really dry, like last year was for us, we didn't see that much from the foliar. We've had better luck on the soil program. Which way do you like guys to go? Well, I have to agree with you. Uh, the, the soybean plant wants to be fed all season long. Uh, from you know, right from the time it, it uh, germinates and goes goes through to maturity, soybean plants are have a consistent pattern or a consistent way that they're taking up phosphorus all season long, and it really starts to increase about 40 days after planting. Uh, about V7 is when we start to see the big increase, and from there it's a straight line curve on up till we are, are really starting to see the plants start to uh, change color. The leaves change color. So that's a straight line curve. And then we could look at the potassium having the same situation. But soybeans have a larger K uptake than corn, and they remobilize potassium a lot more efficiently. In other words, they move it around in the plant more efficiently than corn does too. Both, both of those crops remobilize uh, potassium, but soybeans are, are just a little bit more efficient. So we like to say and in my experience over the years is we've got to get it out there and it, so it's ready for the crop to be using as soon as it, before it gets to V7. So you, you have to be uh, having a good balanced nutrition program in place early in the season. I like that, uh, that comment there about remobilizing the cage. Just get it into the plant and the plant will move it around as it needs it. I think that's a pretty good deal. Now, when we think about dry P and K application, how long does it take for those products to become available for the plant where we can actually pull them out of the soil? Is it totally dependent on moisture, or is there a time factor involved too? Well, it's it's both. Um, but, but you know, phosphorus and potassium, the fertilizer products that farmers are, are purchasing today from any of their retailers, those are going to be water soluble materials. So. Uh, they're going to be able to, what with adequate moisture, they're going to be uh, in soil solution within a matter of probably three to four weeks. And uh, but if it, so, if you can get them into soil solution, the sooner the better. The sooner uh, a fall application on potassium is certainly okay. But you have to watch your soil your soil type levels. You know, if I've got sandy soils, I don't want to put my potassium down in the fall because potassium can tend to move to the soil quicker than phosphorus does. So you want to pay attention to if you're working with a sandy loam or a silty clay loam. Silty clay loam can hold uh, holds water a little bit tighter and it needs drainage, of course. And so you want to watch your timing. Let's let's say we want to apply the 4R nutrient stewardship strategies. You know, the, put it the right product, apply it at the right rate, at the right time, and in, in the right place. We've got to really put those four principles in place when we're fertilizing any of the crops that we're growing. All right, let's talk about where we're placing these nutrients because, honestly, here's what we like to do, Ron. We like to do strip-till in front of our soybeans, so we're building that seed berm in the fall. But at that same time in a, you know, probably early to mid-November application, we're putting on dry P and K down about 8 or 10 inches deep right beneath where that soybean plant is going to be. What do you think of that approach? Are we too deep or do you like that deep placement? We've got uh, medium to heavier soils. So medium to heavy soils, your CECs are going to be in that 15 to 18 
No we've got, we've got CECs in uh, probably, I'd say, 17 to 25. It'll get most of our soils. And you're well-drained, I'm assuming. All, all tiled, yep. We'll talk all more tiled. about that on another show, Ron. But, yes, <laughs> okay. uh, we, we like good drainage. All right, so I would have, I see that as being a good practice. If you were able, uh, that's something that we're going to see more of as farmers are looking to get more efficient and as we're looking to make sure that nutrients are applied in the right place, uh, that banding application. So are you in 30-inch rows? I'm not. I'm we're not we're in 30-inch rows, yep. Okay, so certainly if you're in 30-inch rows and banding it at that 8-inch level, I wouldn't go any deeper than that. I don't see a need to go deeper than that. Uh, shallowing it up, uh, you know, I think that 6 to 8-inch, Depth is a, a good place to be, and uh, from our from the Mosaic Company's position, we are spending more time in this. In 2013, we did a lot of work to evaluate that, so that we can talk more um, openly about it. We we just we see that as a trend and, and something that we want to be better educated ourselves, so we can talk to our dealers and growers about. Uh, Ron, we've got about 30 seconds left. Uh, just one quick thing on phosphorus. Uh, I, I'm real concerned about, especially putting it on top, I'm worried about it uh, being lost if we have any kind of erosion or anything. Uh, what are you advising for growers just to reduce our environmental footprint? Well, uh, banding phosphorus fertilizer is going to become a, a more accepted practice for the very reasons that you mentioned that. So I think farmers need to be gearing up and looking at how they're going to be putting their phosphorus fertilizer, how they're going to be placing it. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Ron. We really appreciate your time today. We'll have to talk again. Good. Look forward to it. Yeah, thanks.